Hello. Today I'm going to try to make a video about antennas and compare their performance on just on receive, um, receiving a weak signal for mesh tastic 868 megahertz, and um, just to show you what's happening on that band, the ISM band, 868 megahertz. That's the um, received spectrum <coughs> received on a outdoor antenna that's that's not resonant at that frequency at all. You can see it's quite busy. Um, here is the 869.525 where the um, mesh tastic happens. I've put up a little carrier on 869 megahertz. I'll tell you about that in a second. And then these are other signals and other users. There's something around 868.2 um, something that's quite strong when it pops up. So uh, it's quite a busy little band here. Um, if I force my <coughs> mesh tastic node to transmit by doing a trace route, bam, there it is. You can see there's a strong signal. And <laughs> the antenna is only a couple of meters away from this receive antenna. So um, that's what the uh, the signal looks like. This is being received using a SDR Play RSPDX. And that is being driven by the software, which is called SDR Console, which I find works really nicely for my purposes. So I use it. Um, so what I'm going to do is to go over to the <coughs> the test bench which is over here it's actually a table i got out of the the rubbish pile where i live <laughs> it works very well for my purposes and what i'm going to do is, is try these comparing these different antennas to each other to measure receive signal strength i've got two different receivers this one has a nice display of dbm i don't know how accurate that is this doesn't but it works very well just to show you how well this thing can work i'll show you this one first and the transmitter <coughs> which uh I can't show you because it's right down there at the end of a corridor and it is a um, nano VNA um, set to 869 megahertz exactly with zero span so it's just putting out a carrier and has no antenna on it <laughs> and because it's in a plastic box it radiates signal quite nicely a weak signal if you put an antenna on the signal's too strong for this test so anyway Let's switch on this uh, little uh, Quansheng UVK5 brackets 8, which is actually tuned to 869 at the moment. Oops, didn't want to press the transmit button. It's disabled, it says anyway. I'm trying to turn on the monitor. There it is. So it's listening on 869, and, you, and it's SSB, USB. And you can just hear the output tone from the signal generator which is unmodulated it's just a carrier and then this SSB demodulator of course results in the tone you can hear the uh, frequency sensitivity if I put my finger on and off the exit button on the keyboard oh, that that buzzing is the uh, the main mesh tastic node transmitting desensitizing this receiver but you can hear the frequency very slightly which shows you that the uh, the frequency can be adjusted by a, a few hertz <laughs> by touching the keyboard. But this is a 12 pound radio um, with the, the Exuma software in it, which works, of course, as we all know, extremely well with that little antenna. And it can receive 868. So sometimes I walk around town with this, listening for bursts of signal. And of course, when I'm trying to communicate with somebody using MeshTastic, I hear my own signal. And I can actually often hear the reply much weaker from the distant notes. So I know that they are answering which is cheating, listening to raw mesh-tastic signals. Anyway, let's switch that one off and uh, let's go over to this receiver, the Malahit or Malahite TSP2. I've just switched it on and I'm going to put this little stubby antenna on it, which should be, oops, I was just thinking about not dropping that, so what did I do? I dropped it. Another live video, folks, unedited. There we are. That's the, uh, you hear the tone frequency is different already because of the frequency accuracy difference between these two receivers. Probably neither of them is right and probably the signal generator is also not right. But using the Nano VNA as a signal generator I thought was a, a nice little idea. I did have um, a mini spectrum analyzer, tiny I say, um, and the, the signal generator that's designed to be in there didn't really work. The signal level was way too low and it didn't perform as I wanted it to at all, so I sent it back. I'm getting a new one, <laughs> just a slightly different one. Anyway, this is the Malahit DSP2 receiving that signal. And if you can see the S meter here, it's showing 
the receive signal level. I'm not going to try and hold this like this the whole time. I'll just tell you what it says. I can barely read it anyway. Um, so the best signal level that I'm getting, because I have to move around to find the best signal level, this is not easy at all, holding a phone and a receiver, and they're both heavy. Looks like minus 97 dBm, but I'm not sure. Let's move around. One thing you do notice is that you move the receiver, you get some pretty big dips. See that? Signals disappeared into the noise. And there it comes up out of the noise. And this is caused by multipath reflections cancelling out at this point in space. And the problem is, of course, if you're walking around mobile with a mesh-tastic node, then you're going to go in these dips sometimes, or you put it down on a coffee table in a cafe. And if you put it in a, a hole, as we call that in radio terms, you're not going to receive anything from that particular transmitter. Move it a couple of centimetres, or one inch, for those of you not watching in metric. And that's enough to bring the signal wide up, up out of the noise. So you really have to be careful with placement of uh, antennas and move them around to get the best signal, which you can't really do using the Mesh Tastic app because it doesn't have a real-time signal display like this. So minus 97 dBm. Oh, minus 95 there. That's probably the best signal I'm going to get. So minus 95 dBm receive signal from that Oops, signal generator down the corridor in the flat. So let's take this antenna off and put on a different antenna. Here's a longer one. This is one of the ones I modified, those Chinese super long antennas that claimed enormous gain, which I opened up and then found a little dipole and trimmed it to the right frequency. Already you can hear the signals louder using this antenna. So it was minus 97 dBm before. What have we got now? <clears throat> you can't see this, but I've got minus 90. Of course, the polarization matters. If I turn it horizontal, yeah, it drops down. So the, the um, nano VNA um, network analyzer being used as a signal generator actually generates vertically polarized signals. If you stand it up in the same way that the receiver is standing up, it's, uh, the polarization is vertical. And of course, the blast plastic case helps it to radiate signals. Normally you'd expect absolutely nothing to be radiated, radiated from a network analyzer. should be in a metal box like this heavy um, machine door. I'm not sure how they make it. There's a nice metal case here. Anyway, um, what have we got here? Minus 89. So the, the best signal strength there looks like minus 89 dBm I can get by choosing the best point. And again, there should be a null over here. Actually, the null is not so bad using this antenna. The little antenna was finding a null point. This one actually isn't doing it at all. So the performance is also better in terms of placement of the mesh-tastic node. Um, and when you're moving it a couple of inches either way for a particular distant node, this antenna will give much better results, it seems. That's an interesting result. I didn't expect that. Interesting. So anyway, minus 89 dBm for that bigger antenna. Let's take it off. <clears throat> this thing should have a, a gain of 2.5 dBi, according to the theory, because it's a half-wave dipole inside there. This thing was bought on Amazon, advertised as a 5 dBi antenna. I think it said 5 dBi gain, and when it arrived, it came with the label. And if you read that, there we are, 3 dBi printed on the label. So that was a bit of a, a mistake from the seller. Let's hope it was only a mistake. And it was um, £17. Pounds. <laughs> which is, in terms of Chinese rubbish, quite a lot of money, but I just wanted to buy it to test it. I might send it back if I'm disappointed with it. Um, <clears throat> so what is this? I re can't remember the results I'm getting, which is a bit stupid. But you can, or I can skip through the video and summarize. So let's try there, there was minus 87, oh no, minus 97 dBm, oh dear. The last antenna was getting something like minus 89 or minus 90. And here I'm just looking around for the best signal level and I think minus 94 is the best that I hit just there. Minus 94 dBm. Is that big null there? Yes, it is. There's that null in that particular position that I have with the stubby antenna. So this performance is not very good. It's also not tuned to 868. I forgot where it was. You have to look at my other video to find out what this is tuned to. And I don't think I'm going to open up this and try and retune it. Don't know what's inside it either. It's waterproof though, allegedly. That's the advantage of this. 
Normally I wouldn't put such a heavy antenna straight onto a re receiver like this because of risk of damaging the connectors, but hey, <laughs> here it is. So yeah, minus 94 dBm, which is about 5 dBs worse than this little dipole. So the, uh, the alleged gain and the advertised gain don't really add up, not at this frequency anyway, but it's quite mismatched at 869 megahertz, I know. So it's not really an ideal antenna. This one came from eBay and it's a Paradar antenna. And I've got two other Paradar antennas, I think, um, which work really well. The beam, the Yagi, eight element works extremely well. I can't test that in this little test because it's outside on the balcony, mounted on a pole and it's all uh, connected with um, taped up connectors to make it rainproof because it's raining in Brighton every day at the moment so I can't take it off and also the other superior black outdoor antennas also nicely mounted and, and, and uh, sealed with tape which I don't want to undo at the moment but next time I uh, do take those antennas off the notes for testing or something then I'll make a video so here I am carefully trying not to drop this or make the receiver fall over what have we got here? Minus 96, minus 94 dBm. I'm moving the antenna around slightly. Focus please, Mr. Camera. Thank you. I tried to improve my audio because people commented it was a bit quiet on these recordings. And the apps that you can, you can't adjust the audio level, of course, on the phone, video recorder on this Android, Huawei. The apps you can buy have got terrible reviews and they say they don't really work, so that doesn't really work. I think I saw minus 93 dBm in there somewhere. There's minus 93. So again, it's not very good. I think minus 93. I'm moving the antenna around. Yeah, that's about the peak signal level I can get. Minus 93 dBm. Um, so none of these antennas are as good as the black one there, which is a half-wave dipole. Um, which reminds me, I do have some more half-wave dipoles I can play with. Or another one, I mean, and also I have a uh, this unscrewing the antenna connection. I have a another rip antenna. Let's just try those. I forgot to put those on the table. Um, so what I have over here is this antenna. This came for free with a um, what was it called? An RTL SDR blog version four receiver. I only wanted the, the dongle, but the dongle only was sold out, so I had to get it with the free, well not free, but the included antenna, a few other bits and pieces like a lossy cable I didn't really want either, but there we are. But now the antenna is coming in useful. And surprisingly enough, it's actually resonant, came with uh, two different sets of elements, telescopic elements, longer ones and these are the shorter ones. And when you collapse them down to the minimum size, it's actually resonant around about 870 megahertz by chance, or maybe it's designed like that. Let's hope it was designed. So I'm going to move this antenna around now. Just a simple half-wave vertical dipole with no radome or plastic casing. Let's see what we get. Minus 92 dBm. Minus 91 I saw in there. Minus 90. So it's hitting minus 90 dBm. So the performance is very similar to the other half-wave dipole in the, the black plastic case. Those cost £2.90 each from Express, but you have to open them and, and trim the, the radiating element, make it longer, <laughs> which is not as easy as cutting bits off, but I've done it with quite a lot of those antennas now, and they all work the same. So this is about minus 90 dBm. There may be a little bit of loss in this coax cable. don't know how uh, good quality that is. You can't really take it off easily to test. So I think that the result of this quick experiment is that this antenna gives the best performance. This gives the worst performance. Don't know what's in there. It's too short for a collinear, maybe. So I don't know. And this one is a bit better. It's not brilliant, but again, it has the advantage of being waterproof, the Paradar outdoor antenna. Um, <clears throat> but uh, certainly for indoor use, I would use this one. A little stubby antenna works pretty well for what it is. It's just a little coil of wire in here, enamel copper wire like a spring, end fed. Um, well, there's other, one other thing I wanted to comment on. I don't know if it happens on this receiver. Let's turn up the volume. But if you put your fingers on and off here, 
the signal level doesn't change, which is what you would hope, because that dipole is balanced and it has like a ground of its own. But if you put one of these antennas on, then it's uh, an end-fed antenna with no ground element, like a dipole would have, that is actually virtual, where you can mathematically um, assume it's virtual and do the calculations. So what it's doing is it's rel relying on the receiver as the ground. And, oh yeah, you can see that when I hold on to the shield or the plug, the signal level increases and decreases. So what it's saying is that it um, is happy being on this, this malahite receiver because it's a metal box and that's making a ground plane for it, just like a ground plane antenna mounted on the roof of a car. And when I touch that, signal level goes down so it doesn't like having any more ground. Now I'm being inquisitive because I want to see what happens on this receiver. Let's turn that on, let it start up and switch this one off. So this is the Quansheng U VK5 with the Exuma software with 869 megahertz and the squelch close. If I press that button, I've programmed it to keep the squelch open. And the S meter doesn't mean much, but you can hear what's going on. That was a transmission from my mesh tastic node. And what I noticed earlier was when you touch this, the signal level changes. Actually, it's not getting stronger like it did earlier. Earlier on when I did this, the signal level improved because it needed the ground of my fingers because this is not such a, a good grounding case. It's probably not shielded. Actually, when I touch the keyboard, the signal level goes down. So you see there's a lot of variables here, things that can change. Um, but I hopefully have provided some sort of comparison between these different receivers. And you might be able to perhaps influence your purchases <laughs> or experimentation based on this. I'm now listening at 868.062, which I've saved, because this channel often has little bits of activity, little bursts, packets of data. Of course, there are none now that I want them, but uh, sometimes it's quite busy, maybe in the evenings. So I don't know what's using that. Maybe you know what's um, sending packets on 868.062. And sometimes it looks like a carrier that's modulated, but it's not. It's not just bursts, but it's a fairly continuous signal, which is, of course, not on at the moment. So there we are. Looking forward to receiving your comments. Please like and subscribe the video and uh, see what I do next.